Survivor's ready. Go! Trap is spoken. Boston Rob and Amber are gonna do it. This is a, a business trip, as I like to say. You, Brad Culpepper. I'm tired of you and the fucking chicken. You can call me the puppet master. They're gonna be my little puppets. It's not like you're making me feel like the devil here. You get to milk your own milk, I guess. Who the hell bought it for me? Chicken. Damn! We got enough rocks here, too. We could build a pretty decent shelter just using rocks. I'm supposed to talk glamour to you. <laughs> That Direct from Hobart, it's time for the only Survivor podcast in Australia dedicated to Survivor. Bringing you all the latest interviews, episodes, and opinions from the greatest reality show on the planet. It's Survivor Oz, and here's your host, Ben Waterworth. Hello, everybody, and welcome once again to Survivor Oz, Australia's number one TV and film podcast. As we bring to you today another Survivor Second Chance campaign interview. We are just beyond excited to be able to talk up this season and help all these contestants campaign to get on the show, particularly this next contestant, because, look, I'm meant to be an unbiased podcast host. I'm meant to kind of give everybody a fair shot and not express my opinions, but if this next person doesn't get on season 31, I am going to be very upset. She's uh, been on this show a couple of times in the past and is from one of the greatest seasons of all time in the second season of Survivor, the Australian Outback. Please welcome back to Survivor Oz, the amazing Kimmy Kappenberg. Kimmy, welcome back to Survivor Oz. Thank you so much. I appreciate um, all your support and everything. This is awesome. Another chance to be out there. Thank you so much for having me. I just I just have to glow at the prospect of anybody <laughs> from the first couple of seasons coming back because, you know, for someone like myself, I've been watching this show since day one and the Australian Outback to me is just such a great season for so many, so many reasons. And to have you and Jeff just even in this prospect of coming back, I mean... <laughs> Did you ever think you'd get this chance again, Kimmy? I didn't think I'd get it. I was hoping. I mean, I have wanted this ever since I got booted off the first time. You know, I um, I really wanted this opportunity. And um, to have me and Jeff, somebody else from my season, go back at, at the same time, I think it'd be phenomenal. You know, we have um, a little bit of uh, interesting... Mm, relationship between the two of us. So <laughs> I think it would be I think it would be great for us. The amazing thing is, is if you and Jeff get back on this season, that means that half of the Australian Outback cast would have returned at some point or another. I mean that just goes to show how good of a season your original season was. That's right. Um, yeah, we are definitely one of the classic seasons, and we had a great viewership. Um, you know, we put on a really good show. That I guess that the group dynamics that they had of the different people out there, we really just um, came together, and we had incredible ratings. I mean, we had the highest rating rated show in the U.S., out of all the Survivor seasons. So that's, uh, you know, we beat out friends in the ratings. You know, back in the day, that's how old it is. We were beating out friends. <laughs> it was the number one show in America, of course, in 2001. That's that's how big it was. But I, I guess yeah. kind of, I mean, you know, it's been 14 years since your season. Uh, makes yes. it sound really <laughs> old when you say that. But, I mean, how, how does this approach come about? I mean, has this sort of been something that CBS had kind of been touching base with you over the years and now finally they've said, hey, this is what we're planning to do? Uh, uh, we're going to put you on a list of people that perhaps can be on the next season. Well, they kind of called me up out of the blue and they just said to me, um, they saw something that I posted on Facebook. My son and I had spent the night in the hospital. He has sleep apnea. So uh, he's got to stay overnight in the hospital um, to get his, his sleep studies done. So someone from CBS called up and said, hey, Kimmy, we just saw um, that your son was in the hospital. And we just wanted to make sure that you were doing okay. We're just reaching out, making sure everything's good. And once I told him, oh, yeah, he's fine. You know, he just has to have these um, sleep studies periodically. Then she was kind of feeling me out saying, oh, okay, do you have any other kids? I said, yes. Do, uh, do you ever plan on getting pregnant again? I was like, hell no, I am 42. <laughs> Bite your tongue. Take that bad juju away from me. <laughs> and then... Uh, 
And then she just said, well, we're kind of thinking about bringing some other people back and having America vote for you. Are you interested? And I said, absolutely. Of course, I want that opportunity. <laughs> yeah. And now that it's all been announced, because, I mean, it's sort of been out there, I think, amongst the fans. We kind of knew <laughs> about it, I think, for the last <laughs> month or so. But uh, I guess it's kind of, you know, similar to back when you were finally announced on Survivor, that um, there's that relief in a way now that, hey, I can actually talk about this. I can go out and campaign properly. <laughs> Oh, yes. I mean, the relief. I mean, this has been a secret. They, they first contacted me in March. So it's been almost two months. And, um, you know, trying to not say anything to people. And I have two little ones. I'm, a, you know, I'm a single mom. So the thought of, hey, I'm going to be gone. I have a lot of preparation that needs to be done. You know, whether or not I'm picked, my kids are already, you know, going to summer camp in Florida and I live in Texas. <laughs> so, you know, I had a lot of preparations that I have to, to take care of and think of because, you know, if they call my name on Wednesday and when they call my name on Wednesday, that is not the time to all of a sudden make a phone call and say, hey, you know, I need to someone to watch my kids for seven weeks you know so there's a lot more prep involved this time and it's a lot different this season too because i mean if this was just a generic returning player season where obviously you would have to keep it secret when it was filming and you'd have to come yes. up no doubt with a bunch of excuses as to where you're going <laughs> at least this at least this way kimmy people know where the hell you are <laughs> yes yes they will and uh yeah, because my boys are six and eight. And so I only told them about two weeks ago. I was keeping it from them because little kids, things slip out of their mouths. So it would be kind of hard for me to be like, okay, mommy's going away to, you know, to, to go away on this uh, exciting excursion and them not being able to share that with their friends. You know, they just, they just parrot everything that you have to say. And how have they been now that it's out there? Are they telling everybody and no doubt are getting very excited for it? Oh, they're thrilled. They're tickled to death. I mean, the the other day on Friday, my uh, their bus driver, you know, all the time, every couple of weeks, she'll wave me over and she'll say, oh, Carter was standing on the bus or this one was, you know, chewing gum. And I'm like, okay. So the other day she's waving me over to the bus and I'm going, what now? This woman jumped out of her seat and gave me a high five. And I was like, whoa, whoa, where's she been for two years? Because this woman has not been able to stand me, you know? <laughs> so now all of a sudden she's like, woo! you know i got your back this is awesome so you know the, the the kids are thrilled and they're telling everyone fantastic and in terms of kind of getting out there a social media presence and getting really the campaign rolling i mean i mean how have you found that because i, I i'm not sure with some of some of the people on this cast that you were really that active on social media until kind of this has all come about <sighs> You know, I've always just done Facebook. I now have a Twitter account. I have an Instagram account. I am still nowhere near qualified to operate these things. I just sit there and I, I don't understand the tweeting and I don't understand, you know, following somebody and hashtag and I'm learning. It's a learning curve, but I have some friends that, that you know, they're they're campaigning for me. They're like, they're like, I'm your campaign manager. I'm like, great. You take care of Twitter with me. You tell me what to do. And uh, I've been being walked through all of it. And to how is the sort of the community rallying behind you too? Are you getting sort of some uh, interest from local radio stations, TV stations, things like that to really help get behind you? Yeah, well, this week I have more people getting in touch with me. The problem is, is that, um, you know, we weren't allowed to say anything until after it was announced. So I wasn't going to go and jeopardize. I know that some other people have contacted media a couple days beforehand, like my my local newspaper comes out once a week on a Friday. So by the time that this was announced on Wednesday, it's not like they could put it in Friday's newspaper, you know? So now it's like, ah, my, my window is short, but um, as long as I get some publicity, I think that'll be just fine. And I think that the, the fans that know about it, they're going to vote anyway. Hmm. Well, I, I found that a lot of people are sharing their votes online, kind of the Survivor fans that sort yeah. of you see out there. And, and for the most part, I mean, you always do seem to be on people's lists. I mean, do you kind of feel this sort of classic era that you're from? And when we spoke to T-Bird about this the other day, um, I mean, do you think that really helps your cause? Because a lot of us super fans, that's what is standing out. It's the fact that, hey... You know, T-Bird, Kimmy, <laughs> Kelly, these guys can be back again. Yeah, I mean, I definitely think that people want the classics. Um, that, that, that's going to go for I think they have a lot of girls that, that are in their late 20s, early 30s, that kind of, when you're looking at them, they kind of look the same. There's nothing so distinct about them. So when you have to vote for 10 um, returning women, 
I mean, some people are just going to vote for me because they're like, oh, let's put the old lady on because, you know, my, my 28 year old daughter can beat her. Whatever <laughs> vote I can get, I will take. I don't care. I'm not fussy. Just include me in the 10. Yeah. Well, I, I will say that, I mean, the, the videos are out there on, on CBS website. They're great. And um, we're getting a lot of comments, Kimmy, that you haven't aged a day since uh, you've been on the Australian <laughs> Outback. So I don't know about this older woman thing. I think you still look the same age you did as when you were on the Australian Outback. <laughs> Oh, well, that's fabulous. That has all to do with genetics. <laughs> Nothing too much that I'm doing, but um, I appreciate that. Thank you. But, uh, you know, but still people, they see that 42 next to someone that's 28. And I don't know, for this game, they think that, you know, I should be put out to pasture. I mean, T-Bird, I think she's in her 50s now. And, uh, I mean, she's way more fit, you know, than, than some of these other girls. Some of these other girls, I think, are very skinny, which is which is fine. Um but I think that she's one of those that's very athletic and, and she can go and endure this probably more than some of these other girls. Mm. Well, I know kind of in a couple of times you've been on the show, we've talked about sort of whether you still keep up with Survivor and all that sort of stuff. But, I mean, do you are you sort of paying a little bit more close attention, maybe particularly to this season as well? Because you might be out there in a yeah. couple of weeks playing against these guys. <laughs> I know. Yeah, no, I've definitely been watching. I also bought um, a package on CBS so I can go and watch all the, you know, previous seasons. So, I mean, I, I'm wrapping up work tomorrow, so I'll be off of work for, uh, you know, six days before um, I go. So I'm going to watch at least a few episodes from each season to refresh my memory of those people that I don't remember. I mean, some of these girls and guys I totally remember from their season. Um, I haven't watched every single season in its entirety, usually I'll watch the first, you know, three or four episodes and only a few seasons I've made it all the way through. I mean, I got, you know, I got life happens and it's like, ah, I have everything DVR'd and the next thing you know, you know, the cat's out of the bag as to who, who won the season. I'm like, dang it, I don't want to go back and watch now. <laughs> I guess it makes it an interesting exercise too with it because, I mean, Survivor completely different to when you play to what it is <laughs> today. So, I mean, yep. l looking ahead to that, it's, it's all well and good to say, how will you play the game? Obviously, it will change yeah. on day one when you're out there. But how, how do you how do you feel sort of right now sitting here with me that you would like to play the game on your second time around? You know, I'm going to have to make an alliance. When we went out there and we played, we knew about alliances. Um, but we just weren't always talking about it. I mean, Kucha, we were all getting along. We didn't have to do the backstabbing. We won three challenges in a row. So we weren't, you know, taking each other out. Um I think that this time, you know, I'm going to go out there with an open mind, but, you know, there's some people that already have relationships in the real world. Hmm. Um, and taking that into the game is going to be a little bit of a challenge. But, you know, you, you got to realize that when you're playing the game, any relationship that you have can be manipulated or strained. Um, and what you think that you're going out there with, you're not going to definitely have that when you're out there. Now, I don't want you to um, single out people because I realise the game kind of in a way has started now, Kimmy. That, um, <laughs> but I mean, are there, are there people that you're looking at uh, amongst your fellow candidates who perhaps you're thinking, I would love to work with them, I want to steer clear of those people? I mean, you're already sort of looking at it that way? Um, yeah, and some of the bias, you know, there are some people that are already... Um, it's out there in, in Facebook world and um, Twitter world that they have alliances. But, you know, we don't know if those are actual alliances or if they're bogus things, things that, you know, just super fans are creating. I mean, I've, I've gotten messages saying, hey, you need to watch out for these people because they're gunning for you. And, you know, there's a lot of talk about um, old versus new I mean, that, that's, that's been all over there. I mean, and, and it, you know, I've played the game. So, yeah, I mean, I have to think of natural alliances. And would it be, it could be an all-female alliance. It could be um, an old versus new alliance. It could be, you know, whoever's on the team, we could be a bunch of misfits. You know, I got to work with whatever cards I'm dealt. And you're not going to be able to make an alliance or, or figure any of that out until you know what the teams are. Mm, and it's, it's always difficult to think who will end up with who, too. Because, I mean, one that really stands out to me on Heroes vs when Jerry came back for a third time. I mean, she ended up working with someone like Coach. Did we ever think we'd see Jerry Manthe and Coach in an alliance together? I mean, come on. <laughs> exactly. I mean, you just don't know where the chips are going to fall when you're out there. I mean, there's 
so many different variables and you can go in there thinking one thing and something else could happen. I mean, that's why I'm trying to leave things open. I just want to get a little bit of knowledge about some people, but you know, somebody could have had a rotten time their first go around or somebody could have had the best time and that could have just been because of the other environmental factors that were on that game. Hmm. You know, you come out to this one, um, you know, just the environment that we're in and the people that we're in, you could put somebody in, in depression or in complete ecstasy with who they're with. So it, it's just going to really deter be determined on who's out there. And I guess the thing with it too is that um, you, you've got to look out, I feel. I mean, someone like Amber, for example, she comes back on All Stars and a lot of people sort of are like, what the hell is she doing out there? She ends up winning the season. So, I mean, it, it's <laughs> kind of like you, you can't, I suppose, overlook some people because that always happens in these type of seasons, doesn't it? The big characters and the big people with the games always get targeted and then it's these people that kind of sneak under the radar and, hello, Michaela's winning the season. <laughs> <laughs> I said that, not I, you. <laughs> yeah, I have nothing to say with that. Um, you know, and then the other thing is, is once you get out there, I mean, no matter how many are in your alliance, somebody's at the bottom of the pecking order. So, yeah, you know, you could have someone that's at the final four, but, but guess what? Those people, if they start out four strong in the beginning and four people make it to the final four, the fourth person, you know, the fourth to last person getting voted out, they're still going to be bitter. Mm. They're still going to be cranky. I mean, somebody still has to go. There's only one winner. So you just got to go and uh, out there and see who can you you who you can use and who's going to use you to take you the farthest in the game. That's that's the bottom line of this whole thing. In terms of, of course, too, again, Kimmy, please uh, don't name names if you don't want to. But um, <laughs> have there been approaches from people uh, on the list potentially about, hey, we should maybe look at doing something when we're out there? <laughs> um, you know, the, the, it, a lot of the connections, um, a lot of us are now all of a sudden Facebook friends, I think, more to, to, to look things over. But I haven't ever had a personal relationship with any of these people. Um, there are some groups that are saying that they are somebody, you know, they're setting up either false accounts or it could be a fan account, you know what I mean? But a lot, but some people don't want to be like, hey, they don't want that paper trail because guess what? If they're not picked, they don't want to be the, the, the bitter man out and be like, oh, well, I have this information and Kimmy and I, we're going to do this, that, or the other thing. So there's some bogus accounts that have been made up. So that way they could go and contact you. And I, you know what? I, I play stupid. <laughs> you know, I'm not going to go and leave a paper trail or, a, you know, a, an electronic paper trail of w what I'm doing. So I'm just focusing on me. I'm focusing on getting votes. I'm focusing on, you know, wrapping things up here so I can go on my excursion. And uh, I really can't think about those head games because I sometimes, you know, you sit there and you feel like, oh, I wonder if it's a CBS trap, you know? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, it's fascinating with that because I know the most recent one we had, what, Blood vs. Water was the last time we had returning players. There was a lot mm -hmm. of pre-game stuff that allegedly happened, and then there was a yeah. whole lot of drama when they were out there. And, I mean, we saw that back in All-Stars with, like, Lex and Rob. And, I mean, it, it always seems to happen. And I've got a feeling, Kimmy, that we're going to see this happening this time around too because, I yeah. <laughs> well, I'm sure it's definitely going to happen. Um, but like I said, even with those alliances, somebody's at the bottom of the pecking order. And if your alliance, I mean, we don't know if there's going to be two tribes, three tribes. You know, Survivor has twists. For all we know, there could be four tribes. You know, CBS isn't stupid. They know, you know, who has somewhat relationships because they have seen, they've been watching our public um you know, our, our, our media and stuff. And they've been looking at this before they even contacted us. So if they see a couple of previous contestants who have a relationship together, yeah, you know what? You could, you could pick them, but if they're on different tribes in the beginning or even if they're together, you know, somebody's going to... It's a dog-eat-dog -dog world out there. I mean, if me and somebody have an alliance going into it, and then, uh, you know, the rest of my crew is wants to vote out my other person, and if it, you know, I got to think. If it's me or them, I want it to be them. I mean, there's, there's, this is a game, you know? This is on the field. Personal relationships have to stay off the field. Now, in terms of um, sort of coming from the era that you're coming into to this era, I mean, you look at someone like Mike Scoopin, who, of course, played season two, yeah. then he played season 25. Is, is someone like Mike someone that you have or would like to talk to maybe about just subtle differences of the game over such a long period of time? I mean, Mike and I... <laughs> 
loosely in contact over the years um by my cuddle buddies you know <laughs> so we, we uh you know we've talked on and off i you know, some you know he's one of the guys that I've talked to. Just like there's other people from my season or other seasons that I've said, "Hey, how you doing?" And you know, we'll send a Christmas card or something. But um, yeah, I mean, he's ex- he's told me some things that have changed a little bit, and it's like, okay, well, I'll, you know, it's going to be different for everybody. Hmm. Y- you know, um, all the old old timers, I suppose. <laughs> <laughs> As T-Bird put it the other day, the mature era of Survivor Kimmy, so. <laughs> yes, exactly, exactly. Now, you know, when it was, yeah, it was a little different. In terms of uh, a certain person, though, that's on the list, Mr. Jeff Farner, we have to talk about him. I mean, you two obviously sure. had a very interesting uh, time together <laughs> during Australia. Uh, I mean, are you happy to see him on the list? Would you like to play with him again? Yeah, I would love to. I mean, I, I, you know, Jeff and I, when we were out there, we had some fun. Um, after the show, Jeff and I both lived in New York. I mean, so we had seen each other a bunch of times at different social gatherings and, you know, different events. Um, you know, it's that whole entire controversy of, uh, you know, me and my annoying voice that gets all over him. But um, <laughs> <laughs> that's okay. That's okay. Um, but, you know, he likes to still blame me for his loss on Survivor. And it's, you know, what? It was the peanut butter and uh, and it was his mouth. You know what I mean? It, it, it's, uh, you got to kind of own up on your own things. But yeah, I mean, Jeff would be, you know, someone fun out there at least. You know, you have some of these people who... Honestly, watching Ice Melt would be more interesting than watching them, you know? And watching Jeff play would actually be like, oh, look, I have my own little jack-in-the-box here. I can wind him up and watch him jump around and entertain me, you know? I'm going to be on a beach with a bunch of people. I, yeah, of course, Varner out there would add a whole big of a, a big fun element. He's definitely um, been... Some of the things he's posting out there to campaign, actually, was amazing. He mentioned you in his video, for goodness sake, so... <laughs> I know. I know. You must have a crush on me. Yeah, that's, yeah. that's definitely it. I think so. But I mean, you're looking at kind of like, say, like a, a T-Bird and, and, I mean, Kelly Wigglesworth. I mean, obviously back yeah. those first few seasons, you guys were very close because you did a lot of events and things like that together yeah. as well. So I guess kind of seeing someone like Kelly and T-Bird, did you have much to do with them sort of back in the day as well? You know, Kelly kind of boycotted everything with Survivor, but she and I had both done um, a photo shoot for Rosie O'Donnell's magazine out in, I don't know, Nevada or something. And this is obviously 14 years ago. So I had met her and um, I mean, I spent a little bit of one on one time with her, but you know, that was it. At the end of the day, you know, we, we had a couple days together and then at the end of the day, it was like, have a good day, have a good day. I went to New York and I don't know. I think she went, you know, into the wilds of Mexico or something, you know, I'm not really sure where she went, but, um, you know, so, so you almost feel like you have that little seed planted. Um, I have, you know, a connection with her. She's an old season. She's, uh, she's a woman. Same thing with, that could be said for PG or, or uh, T bird. You know what? You, you just never know what alliance you're going to have for all. I know we could have a New York East coast alliance. There's several people from, the New York area. Mm, that would be interesting, actually. It's sort of so people are so hung up, really. I think on the old versus new and kind of seasons. But yeah, you're right. Like yeah. in terms of like, because we've seen that before. I mean, I think we've seen a little bit of that that on this most recent season of where people are from. And because again, at the end yeah. of the day, Survivor's a game of connections of, of anything, really. If you can, your favorite TV show is is you know The Sopranos. You guys are going to like hang out together. <laughs> uh, well, ex- exactly, and, and it and it basically is going to to. Be dependent upon what those initial tribes are. I mean, because there's no way, there's no other way to figure it out. I mean, you can say you're going to have A, B, C person, but if they're not on your tribe and you're in no man's land, you're going to grab straws for anything. You, you know, for all you know, the, the you know two enemies could be on a, t- a team and they could just have a. a a mutual dislike for the other tribe members or, or, you know, they just have this survival instinct that, okay, we're going to have to use each other to get to the end and that will uh, organically happen. And, and you're going to see, um, you know, those unexpected alliances. And is it interesting watching this current season, particularly with, say, Mike and Carolyn, because they're still in the game. I mean, you don't even know if one of them wins, so they might not even be on the list. So, I mean, how is that kind of watching them? Because everybody else, you know how they end up in the game, or you'll obviously go through that soon with your rewatches, whereas these two, you don't know how it's going to turn out for them. (sighs) 
No, you don't see how it's going to turn out, but you see that they've already made it farther along in the game than half of the people that are, um, you know, up for this Survivor Second Chance. So you can see the kind of people they are. You can see um, their ethics and, and their drive. And, um, you know, they're both playing really hard and strong. I mean, poor Mike is, you know, a man on an island all by himself. You know, he's everybody else is is out to get him. But, um, you know, he keeps going, and that shows a lot of his character. And and uh, Carol, she's she just keeps on going and being a woman. You know, people are always just still, oh, she's a woman, and look what she can do, which baffles my mind because at this point they're all deprived of their food and energy and their comforts, and um, you know she's doing awesome. So it's it's somebody that's like, okay, well, I I can see what she can do and what she's capable of, and I, and it's fresh in my head. Hmm. It's going to be very interesting with it because particularly that night, I mean, you guys are going to be in the audience or however they're going to do it, and um, yes. potentially they're going to be there live finding out whether they've won or not. So <laughs> yes, exactly, and uh, yeah, so it'll be really emotional for them. I mean, you know, I guess for them if if. Maybe those two are the final two. You don't know. And so one of them's going to be getting a million dollars and the other one's going to be getting a plane ticket to uh, Survivor 31. Yeah. How, how are the nerves getting along, Kimmy? Because, I mean, realistically, if we want to kind of analyze this, this time in two weeks, very realistically, you could be um, out there filming this next season. <laughs> Well, uh, that's what I'm thinking. That I mean, I've I've already mentally prepared. It's like, okay, you know, oh, I'm not going to be here. I'm going to be, you know, on set. Yeah, uh, you know, well, not on set, on the island. Oh, you just, you know, just, that's okay. all fake, isn't it? No, I'm kidding. Uh- <laughs> 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 well, Spoiler. well only, I only say that because obviously I'm not an idiot and I've looked on the internet and I know where the next place is being filmed, yes. but I don't want to say it and I keep slipping up and being like, ah. I, think, I think it's kind of, it's similar to like, um, I mean, in the lead up to all this being announced, we were sort of like, well, we know what the next season is, but we don't want to spoil it just in case we're, we, we all, I think know where it is, but, um, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so I have to call it my adventure, my yes. exotic location <laughs> by something yes but I, I mean no matter what it will be a lot different to the Australian Outback <laughs> oh yes you know what and honestly I loved Australia and I loved the Outback um I'm just looking forward to a damn sandy beach <laughs> because let me tell you something that freaking water grosses me out I have never liked lake water I grew up on an island I like salt water I mean I went all over you, you know the east coast of Australia when I was there and it was gorgeous and i went to the great barrier reef and i loved it however the outback and i with the water we did not get along so i am just looking forward to being in the nice ocean and be like look kimmy takes baths kimmy swims (laughs) so this new location it'll be nice to be you know in the in the ocean where i'm much more comfortable you know (laughs) the, the outback water is nice to visit not so much nice to bathe in yes yes uh, look, we know we, we're very fond of that location, Kimmy, but um, we should imagine that you're uh, very keen to go out there perhaps in a bit of a, you know, more exotic, <laughs> a bit more tropical, a bit yes. more enjoy. Now, um, before we let you go, we've got to give you the opportunity to, to, to plug your, your Facebook, your Twitter. I mean, what, what are you encouraging people to go out there and do besides just vote for you? I mean, is that just the only thing you're basically saying, vote for Kimmy? <laughs> Um, basically, I mean, I don't know what else to say other than I really want to go to, um, you know, Survivor 31. I want this second chance. I mean, come on, you know that after 14 years, people remember me eating a worm. They remember the chicken fight. You know, I sat there and I talked about people, um... And this is 14 years ago and people remember me. So I really want this chance. So if people, I don't, you know what the thing is? I don't even know what the heck my Twitter name is. I think it's just Kimmy <laughs> Kappenberg. That's what it is. It's the, it's, and I know that it's no longer called a pound sign. It's a hashtag. So I'm like a dinosaur with these machines. So it's, it's hashtag Kimmy Kappenberg. And then my, my uh, Facebook is Kimmy Kappenberg as well. And I just want people to go to CBS.com for second chances and vote for me and nine other people that they want to see me have some uh, some fun with 
We will tag it. We will we'll get your Twitter out there. We'll get your Facebook. We'll get people to check it out. And uh, obviously, yes, everybody, each day, vote CBS.com and uh, vote for Kimmy. Uh, I'm not just saying it before when I said we really want to see you on there, Kimmy. So um, hopefully when we next talk to you, it will be yeah. in several months uh, after you've yes. been on the season. And uh, we'll say it as the winner of season 31. Yeah, absolutely. I would love that because if, let me tell you, if I win season 31, I'm taking some money and I'm coming back to Australia because all I want to do is get on the back of a Harley and go ride. So, uh, yeah. so well, yeah, so you got to find me an open back seat back there. So, so you find someone. We, 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 we'll, we'll do the hunting and, uh, you know, make sure you come down to Tasmania as well. And um, we've got our own so, island down here you can do a lap of. Woo-hoo! Looking forward to it. And there you go, ladies and gentlemen, Kimmy Kappenberg, uh, originally from Survivor Season 2, the Australian Outback. And, um, yeah, absolutely mean it when I say uh, want her on the show badly. She's in, easily in my top five people that I personally want to see on the show again and uh, super excited that she's even being considered. So, um Go out there, vote. Kimmy Kappenberg every single day. Uh, we've got plenty more Season 31 potential candidates lined up. We just recorded our uh, analysis episode tonight as well. And in just about 40 minutes' time at times of recording this, I'm going to be speaking to Kelly Wigglesworth. So uh, they're all lined up this week. As I said in the analysis episode, we're not specifically going to be asking for you to send in questions unless they have never appeared on the show before. Someone like Stephanie Valencia... Uh, Stephen Fishback, now Keith, who technically has been on the show but only in an exit interview capacity, we will put out a get involved because at the same time as talking to them about Second Chance, we will fit in some questions about their original season as well. So we will ask for listener questions for those. That's, however, not stopping you from sending in questions. So, for example, uh, PG, we've got on the show in a couple of days. If you want to get a specific question to PG, we can ask that to her and any of the people as well. Um, and to any of the other Survivor Second Chance uh, people who are out there who are listening, uh, the invitation is open. Anybody who wants to come on the show, we've all extended out to you, and uh, we would love for you to come on the show as well. But uh, best of luck for Kimmy. We are rooting for her to get on the show. Go out there and vote for her. Vote every day, and all those links and uh, details are available on our website, SurvivorOz.com. Subscribe to us on iTunes, Twitter, Facebook. All of that's out there. The best way to stay in contact with us, and as always, we appreciate your support. Until we next speak again, my name is Ben, the Tribe has Spoken, and we will speak to you next time on Survivor Oz on The Train. Thanks.